If you get what you want, a realistic basketball experience, it will quite literally ruin the game that we all once enjoyed. If y'all new to the channel, man, be sure to subscribe. Hey, but I am sick of people trying to tell me that because Curry shoots like 45, 50% from three, 43% from th that he should be shooting the same in the game. That because a dribble move isn't done exactly the way it's done in real life in the video game, Therefore, it doesn't belong in the video game. I was watching the NBA playoffs and I saw the meanest Curry slide I've seen in my life. And yeah, while it's not every time you see an exact NBA 2K dribble move in real life, it made me reflect. I don't know if y'all ever been on Twitch before. And for some reason on Twitch, people like, there's a lot of gambling going on. Uh, and one of the things people gamble on is like simulation basketball games, but not NBA 2K. This is what the game looks like. And and by all metrics, it looks, it looks pretty realistic. So I, I see people look at footage like this right here and think, oh my God, if only NBA 2K could look as realistic realistic as this game look but if NBA 2k played anything like this gambling filled basketball simulator plays like none of y'all would play it you guys would call it unresponsive unfun too slow and believe it or not NBA 2k has actually made games like this in the past I think NBA 2k 13 is the best example there's a huge difference between video games and real life in real life war is not fun call of duty fun in real life basketball is fun so a lot of people seem to believe that it should be just like it is in real life the problem is the things that make video games enjoyable are not the things that make playing basketball in real life enjoyable. This video is sponsored by Seeky. You're trying to go to NBA game. Probably, right? I know it's NBA playoff time. Maybe you want to go to a comedy event, a concert of sorts. Any event you think of. Man, Seeky got tickets for that. Seeky takes tickets from all over the web and puts them on one website so that you don't have to do all the hunting. They do it for you. Makes it easy. Then they do you the favor of rating every ticket from 0 to 10 because if you've never been to the facility before, you might be a little confused confused as to whether or not you're getting a good deal. Red means bad, green means good, zero offer. So now you know you're getting a good deal and you can do what you really wanted to do in the first place, sit back and enjoy your free time and be entertained. Oh, the NBA playoffs have been fantastic so far, man. Makes me happy, makes me smile. The process is super easy. If you guys are trying to go to an event anytime soon or you have one in mind, scroll down to that top link in the description. It gets better because if you use code agents at checkout, you get $20 off your first order. So make sure to use SeatGeek for all your ticketing needs. It's a huge thank you to SeatGeek for sponsoring this portion of the video. So let's look at the tier list of things that make video games fun. At the top of the list, game has to be fun, bro. You can put together the most fantastic, realistic, most immersive experience of all time. But kind of like No Man's Sky when that game launched, if there is nothing to do, there is no reason to play, it is not fun. Number two, it has to be affordable. Could be the greatest game of all time. If the bitch costs $200, nobody's playing it. And third on the list is finally realistic. That's where NBA Live f***ed up. They just kept coming out with games that had unrealistic animations. So now we established that, let's take a look at some of the things that make NBA 2K fun to play. For one, is the highlight moments. There's nothing more enjoyable than in a mean ankle breaker, he gets up and you dig him down with like an elbow hand contact animation. Those like rare moments that trigger from time to time are quite random, kind of like how they are in real life. But man, when it hits, man, you clip it, you post it on socials, and you shit on your friend the next day at school or work. Number two is competitive competitive shit like there's no better feeling than a good game down to the buzzer and then somebody on your team hits a game win winning winning feels great it doesn't matter how great the game is if you spend the whole time losing there's only so much fun you can have and then like progression or rpg the story mode you want to feel like as you play the game not only are you getting better but you're rewarded for playing the game in ways that make you want to play it more so good rpgs find a way to do this successfully i think 2k nailed it low-key with nba 2k 22 at least on the next gen so those two things aren't always seen either to eye. Making the game more realistic could come at the cost of the game actually being good. But a realistic 2K would look like a lot of half-court sets, slow-paced game, timeouts. It would be like whatever tier would be above Hall of Fame difficulty, it would be that. And that's because in all reality, when you're playing video games, what's more important is creating a skills gap that's fun to climb. A gap that rewards people for playing the game and improving their skill, but at the same time doesn't like punish people for being new at the game. It's a meaningful balance, man. It's part of the reason why so many people hate skill based matchmaking. One of the best feelings in gaming is starting off on a game being horrible. You play the game, you give it effort, you put in time, you're unlocking rewards and attributes and bad 
badges and stuff like that and then now you're able to unlock moves you're consistently doing impressive stuff you're climbing in the leaderboards you're playing against more like impressive opponents Yo, there's no better feeling than progressing like that it makes you not want to stop playing the game is always a challenge and it's a fun one but at the same time the more randomness you add the more you reduce the skill gap basketball is pretty random you put up a shot it's wide open you released it well and all man it hits back rim and it goes flying as a long rebound that's random and we're a lot more forgiving for those random moments in real life in a video game yo if i have a 93 point shot with all my badges and i get the perfect release window if i'm not hitting that bro, i'm about to start getting upset bro it's a random sport though yo, bro, we, how many times have we seen a, a, a dog shit team beat a really good team sometimes really good teams just have an off day so that should be possible in the video game too true yes that is true but the more you reduce randomness and reward people for proper inputs and improving in the video game the more fun it becomes so to actually make nba 2k realistic you need to make shooting more random slow the pace of the game down simplify the dribble move dramatically and give people less control over defense because again bring it back to this horrible simulator here those are all things they do the game slows down dramatically but it feels real they're running plays in a half court set the animations look like something you would see out of real life like a mean hedge right there they kick it wide open three like all of it feels like stuff that would happen in real life and nba 2k 13 was just like that even though it felt like the game at first took a huge leap in realism but usually what that meant is every time lebron drive it doesn't matter what type of defense i played i was getting dicked down because he was getting contact dunks but the contact dunks wasn't starting when he clicked the button it started well before that it started with the blow by animation and now you're stuck in this animation and, and there's no going nowhere man you're sticking with the player oh you get digged down and you're like bro what am i supposed to do defensively i have a good defensive player and i hit all the correct inputs at what point am i gonna get rewarded for that i hear it said all the time when it comes to the iso and dribbling community people tell the dribblers all the time yo that's not real life people can't play like that in real life that don't mean make the game unrealistic now all right bro unless you're playing like an nba street game or something like that you also want the game to be realistic it's about finding a balance 2k16 was pretty fucking realistic the defense felt good the offense felt good the dribble moves felt good but it was also like pretty high speed you could string together dribble moves to do things and boost in different directions it had skill and it also rewarded you for good shots and good dribble moves it was a consistent game While, although it wasn't perfect even though it wasn't a perfect game it was one of the best examples of being able to balance a realistic look with a fun feel and this actually applies to almost every video game any video game that's like designed to look realistic like uncharted there's gonna be parts of the game that dash has nothing to do with real life it just has to do with making the game more fun and enjoyable to play and then there's gonna be other parts in the game that's designed for realism for those of you who've played any of the ufc games that ea's ever come out with you know what i'm talking about that game especially when you play online bro it takes like 16 centuries for an input to actually register in the video game so there's like a disconnect you feel because it's like when you click it this doesn't happen it happens at some point in the future and that usually is because your character is already doing something maybe like there's some form of resistance against him and the reality is is sometimes when you're fighting somebody you can place an input maybe try and punch him but if he's holding your arm there's nothing you can do but that also applied to nba live their basketball game bro man that shit was a hella unresponsive and i think they made it that unresponsive so the animations looked a little bit more, more realistic because the main criticism they were getting was the game didn't feel real and then that's where games like nba 2k 11 shine where it wasn't bogged down and slow in the name of realism the game was responsive as fuck bro if you moved your character in a direction as long as he didn't have to contort his body to go in another direction he immediately went in the direction you asked him to yo so again there's a balance there and because nba 2k is a notoriously unresponsive laggy of a video game the last thing we need is to make the game even less responsive hopefully that made sense it does in my brain at least but again at the end of the day it's all about finding a good balance unfortunately nba 2k also went in the wrong direction with the season 6 update if you missed that video go ahead and click that right there if you guys enjoyed the video drop a like subscribe to the channel otherwise i'll catch you guys in the next one